previous video we built the address selection functionality in our flutter application in this video we will be building the functionality on our backend to save that user's address and select a default address as well stick around and you can follow along with the process of me implementing address selection in firebase this is episode 12 in a series of a follow along series where we are building a food delivery service using flutter and firestore if you are just joining in, you can go over to github.com forward slash fault stacks forward slash boxed out and you can download the source code from there. Once you have the code, you can open up the address selection view model file in the customer folder in the clients folder for the boxed out project. The function that we are tackling today is the save address function, which we have stubbed out in the previous tutorial. The first thing we'll do as always is to log an information log indicating to us the address that we have passed into the save address function. Then we'll create a new final variable called address doc and in that variable we will store a value return from a new function we'll create called get address collection for user. This means we will require the user ID as well. So we'll add a new parameter to the save address function called user ID that is a required string. We'll pass that user ID into our new function and then we can create a function that returns a collection reference called get address collection for user. This will take in a positional parameter of type string called user ID. Based on the planning that we did in the earlier episodes, we know that the addresses will be stored in a sub collection under the user's profile. So what we'll return from the collection reference is we will index into the user collection using the user ID. And then we will get the collection using addresses as the name of the collection. One thing we don't want to keep is these magic values. So I'm going to move the string for the collection name into a constant value. You can open up the app keys file and inside that file we'll create a new constant string and we'll call that users firestore key. For now we'll just paste the addresses value in there and we'll duplicate the users firestore key value. Then we'll change the second one to addresses firestore key and we'll also update the users firestore key to reflect users instead of addresses then we can replace the collection references and use those keys instead of the hard-coded string values for the addresses doc we will call dot doc at the end of the get addresses collection for user function and that is to get a reference to a new document that we can manipulate and also have an id for then we'll simply call dot set on the address doc and we'll pass in the address and we'll copy that value and pass in the address docs id as the id of the address this will give us these, the exact id that the document will be on firestore so we know exactly how to reference our address then we can make our lives a bit easier by adding a verbose log that will indicate to us the id that's going to be used to save this address We'll store the ID in a new final value called new address ID and that will be equal to the address doc dot ID. And then for the copy with function call on the address, we can pass in the new address ID as well. Then we want to log out that the address save has been complete. Since we always want to return a boolean indicating success or false, I'm going to wrap all of the code that we just wrote in a try catch statement. And for the catch, we will check if it is an exception. And if it is an exception, we want to log out an error that will give us some insights into what has happened. I'll simply put the message, we could not save the user's address and I'll add the exception at the end of that as well. The last statement in this catch will be to return false. And as you can see in the top, in the try, once we've saved the address, we'll return true. This means on the outside of the save address call, we can always check for true or false, regardless of what's going to happen inside this function. Then we can head back to the address selection view model where we now need to pass in the user's ID as well when we save the address. Before we add all the code for that, let's just get the tests to compile. So I'm going to pass in the empty string for the user ID for now. Then we can check and find the save address call in the verify for the test cases and we can pass in a user ID for that test. If we go over to the test helpers, we can see that the default ID value is a string called default user. 
And this makes it so that it's quite difficult to figure out what the user ID will be when you try and verify your test cases. So in the test helpers file, I'm going to create a new constant string called user ID test key. And I'll give that the value default user based on the one that we use in the user ID. And to make sure it's always in sync, we will use the user ID test key to return the default user if the user hasn't passed in one to return from the mock. Then for the test case that we just added, now we now know that we can check for any user ID instead of a specific one because at the moment that test case is not testing specifically for the user ID to match. I tried to run the tests and I saw that everything failed with the same reason that it would fail if a function was not being stopped. All we have to do is go to the get and register Firestore API function and where we are doing this stub for the address save we need to also stub for the user id and check for any named user id to be passed in in addition to that in the previous video we also added the initialize call for the environment service into the startup view model and if we try to run the test you see that it fails because the initialize function is actually not being stopped so open up the get and register environment service function and we'll stop the initialize function to return a empty future when it's called then i'll run all the tests again if we look at the reason for test failure now it's because we are checking the wrong version of the verify because we're not passing in the user id to the save address call so we'll pass in the user id and we'll check for any named parameter with a user id we can paste that everywhere where save address is being called and if we run the test again we should see that everything should pass at this point now we can add one new test into our address selection view model test which is simply to check if we are getting the user id from the current user on the user service we'll start off as always by getting the user service as a final value using the get and register user service function from our test helpers file then we will get our model from the get model function and for the action we want to run the select address suggestion function We'll pass in the autocomplete result using the same place as autocomplete construction from the test above. And then we want to verify that the current user property was fetched on the user service. To confirm that this is not implemented yet, we run the test cases and we see that it fails. Then we can head back to the address selection view model where we can now import the user service and get that from the locator using the user service type. Then above the save function, we will create a new final value called user ID and we'll get that from the current user on the user service and store the ID. Then instead of passing in an empty value, we can now pass in the user ID from that value that we just created. If we now run our test cases again, we know that the test should all pass. I'm going to set up the emulator and everything so that we can show that this actually works. If you select an address based on the, the autocomplete and you click on the continue button, when it tries to save, you'll see that it actually fails. And the reason for that being that the security rules on the Firestore is not allowing us to save our address. To make our Firestore rules development friendly, I will make sure that the match clause matches every single document in our firestore database and will allow read and write for that document if the user is authorized that should be fine for now once we get to the security parts of the code we will update this to be specific for each of the collections we have in the firestore database if you try and save again after having updated the Firestore rules, you'll see that it now successfully saves the user's address. If we head over to the Firestore data tab and we look for the user, you'll see that one of the users will have a addresses sub collection. And in that collection, there is a new document for the address that we have just saved from the mobile device. So that's the first task done for this tutorial, which means we can tick off saving of the addresses for the user's details. The next thing is to set the user's address as default if that is the only address in the current address book. To do this, it'll be easier if we pass in the entire user object to the save address function. So we'll update the parameter to taking a user type and change the name of the parameter to user instead of user ID.
then we can just simply index into the user to get the ID for where we need that ID. This will cause a few things to break throughout the app. So we can just go through and update the user ID to pass in an actual full user. The default address implementation will be quite quick given the way we've set up our code. We'll start by creating a new final variable called has default address and we'll set this equal to the user.has address property. This property we added in one of the previous tutorials when we were building our startup logic to check if we have an address to navigate to either the address selection or the home view. Then we'll go ahead and update our verbose log to print out if we do have a default address. And then for the logic, we'll simply check if we do not have a default address. Then we want to log out that the current user doesn't have a default address and that we should save the current address being saved as the default address. And for the actual saving of the address, we'll get the user's collection and then get the document for the user's ID. Then we'll call set on that document so that we can update the user document. We'll pass in the user.copywith function and we'll set the default address equal to the new address ID and pass in the JSON of that user model. And when that's complete, we'll add another verbose log. For this log, I want to print out the user with the user ID and indicate that the default address is set to the new address ID and print that out as well. If we head over to the Firestore database again, you'll see that there's no default address and I've also removed the address that we saved previously in the addresses collection. We can now run this code and we can log in using the continue with Google login button. We can select the account that we want to log in with that we know doesn't have a default address yet. This will bring us to the address selection view where we can now enter our address and we can make use of the autocomplete to select that address. Once we save that address, you'll see in the log that it prints out everything that we've put in there so we can just go through that quickly. So as you see from the logs, we are printing out everything that we wanted to have. The first one is that the address will be stored with the specific ID that we log out and then we can indicate that we have no default address. Once we know that, we also know that we are going to be saving a default address. So here you can see that we are saving the address with all of the details. One of the details that I actually saw that was missing is the street number. And I actually want to just go ahead and add that in. And we'll just add that in afterwards to the code so that we can make sure that we are saving the street number as well. Then for the default address check, you can see that the ID for that address is now set to the default address ID in our user's profile. That is everything to implement default address as well as address saving functionality on the Firestore backend. For the next video, I actually wanted to ask for help on the UI implementation because I don't like making videos about building a specific UI. It's one of the easiest things to do in Flutter and so I don't think it's important enough to focus on just building UIs on Flutter. So I've made a ticket on the boxed out repo and I've added five to do's in there for anyone to implement this PR. I'm hoping that someone does it because um, otherwise I'll have to do it but this time I'm going to do it off screen and I know that some People watching the channel don't like it if the code changes without them seeing the code change in a video. Um, I'm not going to make another UI tutorial unless there's animations involved. So if someone is, is, is available, please go and implement that issue. I will do a review of your pull request as one of the episodes so that you can also see how we do code reviews and what kind of things we look for in the code and ask for changes on. Other than that, I think the next episode we will focus on generating some fake data for the backend. This way we can start with the home view development and build out the feed on the home view based on the address selected. That's it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next week.